Hello kids, today we are going to start with a new chapter, chapter 12, Reproduction in Plants. Okay, and today we will be studying about the topic vegetative reproduction in plants. So, we will start. Now, what do you mean by the term reproduction? Reproduction means it is a process of production of young individuals which are similar to their parents. Okay, so this reproduction occur in plants also. Okay, now this reproduction in, in case of a plant, the whole plant in a plant there are you can see different parts for a plant is not it, you have studied it in previous chapters. The all these parts can be divided into two, all the different parts can be, uh, can be put under two headings actually. Okay, in a plant the flower is called as the reproductive part of a plant or the reproductive organ of a plant is the flower. All other parts other than the flower that means the root, the stem, the leaves, everything they are called as the vegetative parts of a plant. So, a plant is having two parts, vegetative parts and reproductive parts. Clear? Yes. Now, in a plant you can observe two different types of reproduction. Number one is asexual reproduction and number two is sexual reproduction. Now, what is the first one? Asexual reproduction. If the plant is producing, if the plant is reproducing or if the plant is creating a new small plant without the production of seeds then you call it as asexual reproduction. Clear? You can see asexual reproduction in plants like roses, potatoes, sugar cane etc. Whereas, if a plant is producing a young individual through seeds, you call it as sexual reproduction. Examples mango, orange, cucum cucumber etc. So, those plants which produce seeds Okay, those plants which are produced from seeds, okay, you call them as sexually reproducing plants and those plants which reproduce without seeds, you call the method as asexual reproduction. Hope it is clear. So, today we will study about the asexual reproduction in plant. We are not going to study this topic today. We are going to study about the first point, asexual reproduction today. Okay, yes. Now, see the slide. This slide shows you different types of vegetative propagation methods. Now vegetative propagation, right now I told you asexual reproduction plants and now I am telling you vegetative propagation. Now what is the difference between the two? Actually both are same. Okay, vegetative propagation is the type of asexual reproduction. Okay, where you can develop a new plant from the vegetative parts of a plant. Remember the first slide I told you? Other than flower, all other parts of a plant you call them as the vegetative parts, root, stem, leaf, etc. So, if you are developing a new plant from a root or from a stem or from a leaf, then you call it as vegetative propagation. So, if a vegetative part of a plant is used as a propagule, propagule means the part used for propagation, the part used for the production of a new individual. Okay, so if a vegetative part is used as a propagule, you call it as vegetative propagation. It is a type of asexual reproduction. Hope it is clear. Okay, now see different vegetative propagules are shown here in this slide. Okay, we will study about them in detail in the upcoming slides. Just take a small glimpse of it, that is it. Okay, you can sometimes roots can be used as propagules, sometimes stem, underground stem can be used as propagules, sometimes uh, the branches, the stem, uh, the leaves can be used as propagules, see the small branches can be used as propagules, all these are different methods of vegetative propagation. Okay, now you are going to study one by one in detail, a few you will be studying today. Okay, so we will see the first one. The first type of vegetative propagation method is cutting. Okay, cutting you can observe in plants like roses, 
money plant etc now what you do you take small pieces of stem you cut small pieces of stem and the stem you directly plant it in soil or in some uh, growing media the stem is going to give you new branches and it is going to develop into a new plant okay from the base of the stem new roots will develop from the above portion new leaves and new branches will develop the plant a new plant you get from a small cut of a stem okay in case of roses can you see such type of cuttings you might have seen in roses isn't it you might have propagated roses like this such cuttings you can put them in soil after a few days you will be getting small branches from here okay now listen carefully when you are taking this cutting when you are cutting small pieces of stem for the purpose of vegetative propagation make sure that the cutting is having at least one node in it you might have studied about a node in lower classes in previous chapters and all isn't it what is a node the part of the stem from where a leaf arises okay just look here in this diagram so this is a small stem this is the point from where a leaf arises isn't it you call this point as the node the part of a plant from where a leaf arises now a leaf is coming from this node you can see this leaf which is arising from a node isn't it now observe the axil of this leaf what do you mean by an axil if this is a stem and if this is a leaf okay you call the point in between the stem and the leaf that means this 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 particular area as the axil of a leaf axil okay so can you see the axil here on the leaf if a bud is present on the axil you call this bud see you can see buds on these axil you call such buds as axillary buds the bud on the axil of a leaf axillary bud clear buds can also be present on the tip of the stem you call them as terminal buds okay a bud can develop either into a flower or into a new branch in case of cutting when you are taking stem cuttings normally these buds more clearly which bud axillary bud see the bud at this axil the axillary bud will develop into a new branch you can see here isn't it see the axillary bud is developing into new branches the axillary bud is present at the node of a step is this clear okay so this is how you propagate plant by a process by the vegetative propagation method called as cutting another example for cutting you can see in this plant money plant it can also be propagated by the same method cutting you can take small cuttings of stem and you can grow them either in soil or in water okay the thing is at least one node should be present on the cutting on which you uh, which you take for growing a plant okay so with this cutting is one more example is there sorry cactus cactus plants can also be propagated by cutting just see this diagram small piece of the cactus can be removed by using a knife see and the small piece can be kept into a potting medium or into directly into the soil it will develop roots beneath and slowly the cactus will develop more uh, branches onto the top it will develop into a new plant okay so you can propagate plants by means of cutting examples for plants which you have seen right now cactus money plant and rose okay children the second type of uh, vegetative propagation method is by using stem tubers tuber means it is a storage organ tuber means a storage organ the plants will be the plants will be storing its food the excessive food will be stored in certain organs you call them as tubers you can get sometimes stem tubers if the uh, food is stored in a region in a part of a stem you call it as stem tuber if it is stored in the root you call it as a root tuber both the stem tuber as well as the root tubers of most of the plants can be used as propagules for vegetative propagation one such example is the potato you might have seen a potato you might have seen such spots on the potato isn't it these spots are actually the node n o d e nodes of the potato 
okay it's actually a stem potato is a stem stem as we told earlier as we took a, a stem of a rose stem will be having nodes and internodes similarly this potato will also be having nodes and internodes the node of a potato you call it as an eye okay and i have already told you on the node there will be an axillary bud here also on this node you can get axillary buds see axillary buds will be seen at the nodes and at the tip of the potato you will get terminal bud the bud at the tip of a plant or the tip of the stem you call it as a terminal bud so both axillary and terminal buds you can get in a potato tuber okay from both the axillary as well as from the terminal bud new plants can arise see this diagram see new plant is arising from the axillary as well as from the terminal bud okay so this is an example of a stem tuber next one you are going to see about a root tuber i have already told you tuber is a storage organ so when the food is stored in a root you call it as a root tuber you can get such root tubers in plants like sweet potato then in plants like dahlia this is dahlia okay so in such plants and all you can get root tubers now these root tubers also will be having such buds on them from the buds plants can arise see stem can go come up and roots will be developing down and you can take all these individually you can cut them and you can plant them in soil you will get more plants see from the same root tubers from from one single root tuber just see how many plants you will get you can take this portion and you can uh, create a plant you can take this portion and a plant can be produced this third one this fourth one fifth one like this so many small small plants can be produced from a single tuber is this clear next type of uh, vegetative propagation method is by is through underground stem certain plants in certain plants like ginger and all ginger turmeric and all the underground stem act as a vegetative propagule and such underground stems you call them by a name you call them as rhizomes R H I Z O M E rhizome. You can see rhizomes in ginger. The part of ginger which we consume is a rhizome. Turmeric, the part which we consume is a rhizome. It is an underground stem only. Stem will be having both nodes and internodes. So on this stem also there will be lot of nodes and internodes. From the nodes, lot of uh, see buds will be there on the nodes. and every bud can develop into a new plant can you see plant coming up similarly a root will also develop down from the bud so this ginger you can break it into smaller pieces provided every piece should have a node in it it should have a bud in it it will develop into a new plant the same thing is applicable for turmeric also okay so they are underground stems called as rhizomes is that clear next is a leaf bud leaf bud buds present on the leaf on the margin of leaf just see this diagram this is a leaf of a plant called as bryophyllum bryophyllum okay on the margin of this leaf okay the leaf will be having a margin no this margin will be having notches like this notch means the small structure see this is a notch okay the small gaps which you can see on the margin you call it as a notch of a leaf at this notches small plants will be growing small leaves and roots you can see arising from these notches okay see the diagram is shown here you can see at every notch a small plant is developing leaves are coming up and roots are coming down can you see this you can cut it into individual plants and you can grow them separately okay so this is a leaf bud of a bryophyllum so which all vegetative propagation methods did we study right now number 1 cutting number 2 by tubers both stem tuber and number 3 root tubers we studied then underground stem rhizome can be used as a propagation method then leaf buds can be used as propagation method okay is this much clear okay so with this the different methods of vegetative propagation a few methods only this much you need to study right now it is over okay 
we will stop with this. Now we will see what are the advantages of vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation is having lots of advantages over, uh, over sexual reproduction. The major advantages are number one, it takes less time, the plants will take less time to grow. Okay, uh, for example, in case of rose cutting and all, the cuttings can easily grow into a new plant. But just think about you are taking a seed, you are putting it in soil, the seed should become a seedling, the seedling should grow up, it has to produce fruits, flowers, etc. How much time it will take? But it is very simple to propagate a plant through cutting, isn't it? So, it takes only less time to grow. Within a short period of time, you will get more number of plants. More number of plants. So, within a short period of time, more number of plants can be produced by vegetative propagation. Second advantage, it will be bearing fruits and flowers at very easily, it will be bearing fruits and flowers at an earlier stage than those produced by sexual reproduction. Point number three, the new plants produced after vegetative propagation will be the exact copy of the parent plant. But in case of the plants developing from seeds, they may be sometimes different from their parents. Okay. And the last one is, this is the only method of propagation to propagate seedless plants. For example, banana. Ah, oh, banana, banana, is, is it having a seed to propagate? Roses, is there seeds for propagation of roses? So, in such plants, this is the only method of propagation. Okay. So, these are the advantages of vegetative propagation. So, hope this topic was clear for you. It's a very easy topic. Study well. Have a nice day. See you all. Bye.